Awesome. Now, we think we're special. There might be something else going on that's more important. We're in this universe, aren't we? Yeah. They try to make a new universe. What do you mean? There's a machine somewhere. What? A big bang. They're making a big bang again. Right. Well, that you've got that completely wrong, but sure. They're not trying to create a new world. They're trying to recreate the conditions that happened at the beginning of the Big Bang. They're not trying to recreate a new world. All right, so they, but the it's world came, different. but the world came from the Big Bang. Yeah, but they're trying to recreate the conditions so they can test and they can experiment to see dangerous. the conditions before. Yes, it is dangerous. Apparently there is a threat. There, admittedly, there is a danger, yeah. very small danger, that they could create a black hole that would destroy the world. That so why are they true. doing that? Who's allowed that? <laughs> this is what annoys me, it's because humans think they're special. Oh, who made the Big Bang? Oh, I'd like my name on that. I want to <laughs> claim it. <laughs> why do people always want to better someone else? It's happened, let them have it. Well, don't you, th what you said about progress, you're trying to change time. Yeah, but that's not going to harm anyone, a big bang. I just don't, I, I don't think we need, I mean, we haven't filled this universe yet, have so we? Thought, but the, what you talking about, I don't know what you're saying, you're contradicting yourself. Every other sentence contradicts what you said last time. You do want to fill it, you don't want to fill it. We haven't filled this universe, we don't need another one. We do want progress, we don't want progress. I'm Carl, saying, what do you want? I'm saying we don't want another universe. Well, no, no. We haven't got our head around this one yet. We we're don't not trying know where to create a new is. one, but go on. Don't create a new one. We're not trying to, no is one's that, trying is, to. Is that your philosophy? Don't create a new universe. <laughs> but why are it's we looking at that? It's a giant research experiment. Why they're not trying to that? create a new universe. Why are we looking at that then? Why do we want to go back today, Dot? So that we can better understand the world that we live in, how we, the world d d evolved into the position we're in now. If it did indeed start with the Big Bang, what were the conditions? How did it come from nothing into something? That's what we do. We say why and how. I know, and but when, sometimes. It, and what next? And I, is it good? You know, I don't mind asking questions. I like asking questions. Is Ask yours question. are where are slugs going? But it's just this thing of faffing about with things that are, they don't know what they're doing. Okay, right, okay, Carl. You're in charge of the world now. You are this. You're, you're all powerful. You're like a god, okay? You can do anything. You go, you call all the scientists and they go. What do you want of us? Oh, oh, orange-headed one. What the fuck do you want of us? Right? Right. Stop the Big Bang research. Stop it now. Mm. Okay? Okay, drop your talk. Okay, good. Throw that away. What do you want them to do? The might, the might of every intellect in the world standing before you, as far as you can see. <whistles> Hello? Listen, everybody. This is what I want you to work on. Go. What do you say? Uh, well, I want, I want to come in and how long have they been working on the Big Bang idea? I forget it. it just, you've got every science. No, but I don't just want to come in and, and poo poo that because they're going to. Poo poo. They're, they've, they've done a lot of research well, on hold it. Hold on. You, you wanted to stop a minute ago. Yeah, I know, but you don't just come in, guns are blazing. I'd say, I'd say, hello everyone. You can everyone. do anything you want. Oh, go on, go on. Yeah, hello everyone. Hello, Carl Leader. Right, uh, listen. Um, this big bang thing you've been doing. Yeah, well that's uh, just only a few of us, that's like less than a millionth of a percent of us, we're all here. Yeah. I've dropped AIDS research, I've dropped cancer research. Right, well why have you dropped that? I'm working Who's told you to do that? Well no, we just, well we knocked off, they said you wanted to tell us something. We're all here, every scientist in the world well, is listen, here. Well listen, where are you from again? Well, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter, I'm from Cornwall, I'm, I'm looking no, what, at... No, what research are you doing? Oh well uh, I'm looking at, um, uh, at what happens if you give Feminax to an owl. What happens? Well, I'm halfway through it. You, I got called away. Look, I'm really busy. What do you want me to work on? Who said they're doing cancer? Hey. Go back. Go back to work. Cheers. Right. <laughs> okay. The rest of us I've doing got... stuff that you think we're fanning around with. What would you want us Listen, to do? Listen, well, I can't do it all today. What about me? I was doing AIDS. Hang on a minute. I was doing AIDS. You just wait a minute. Right, okay. Why does cancer get to go back? Are you saying that cancer's a bigger problem than AIDS? You I'm go back to work. So I'm, I'm, going to back. I'm doing, oh, I'm doing restless legs. Right, can everybody but the Big Bang people leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've come to an end of um, episode two of series five of the Ricky Gervais show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Thank you. And Carl Pilkington. All right. I was working on cold sores. Fuck off. I'm doing bunions. So, welcome to episode three of this final Ricky Gervais show series. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. 
and Carl Pilkington. All right. Have you heard this uh, thing they're doing? The uh, schools have got together. They're um, they're tired of obesity being a problem in England. It's a big problem in England. Um, basically, everyone's overweight, particularly kids. There's kids that are like you know ten stone going to infant school and stuff and junior school. It's getting ridiculous. And so now, the teachers are allowed to weigh the kids. They're going to weigh the kids. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, get them in there and go, right, you, right, get on the scale. And then they're going to send a letter to the parents saying, um, please be aware, um, your child is obese. Now, I don't know what good that's going to do because a teacher will send a letter to a parent, go, uh, dear Mr. and Mrs. Barnes, um, we weighed little Johnny today at school and he's overweight, he's a big fat pig. And they're going to go, yeah, we know. We have to push him out the door to get him to school. He makes a popping sound. <laughs> we know he's fat. He eats too much. We know he's fat because we have to buy him pairs of trousers every two weeks. Yeah. Well, we know he's fat because we're a couple of fat bastards Always. ourselves. Always. I love that when they say about a child obese, they show you a picture of a kid and his face is nearly closed up. Yeah. It, it's just closed, right? There's no eyes anymore. He's just got little slits for eyes where his cheeks and his forehead are meeting. Yeah. Right? And you just go, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you see the parents, they go, well, yeah, we can't do anything. And you go, no, look at you. Yeah. No, I saw a couple the other day. I saw a dad, giant arse. Yeah. And then I was walking behind them and two kids, exactly the same giant asses. Yeah. Uh, now that I don't, I can't believe, believe that that's Well, just, they eat the same things. You can't. Yeah. Like a couple of bison it was. Yeah. If they're, if they're, yeah. If the parents are just eating, they can't say to the kids, you've had enough. They go, right. what, what, fuck, look at you. I saw them in the, in Tesco supermarket. You know, they've got like cafes in there now. Have they? Big fat family in there. The fact that they're buying food and they're having a break from buying food to eat food. <laughs> to eat food, yeah. <laughs> Just well, sums it up. It made them a bit donuts. peckish, didn't it? I mean, that, don't forget, that is the only exercise they get, pushing a trolley round. They get home and then they wedge themselves in that three-piece suite and they're watching ITV1 for the rest of the night. Yeah. And, and eating cakes and things, microwavable stuff. Well, they're actually, they're watching uh, X Factor, but they're not, they're only watching X Factor waiting for the adverts for Pringles. Exactly, Domino's yeah. Pizza. <laughs> exactly. That's what they're looking forward but to. They, they could do that. They could make it a bit harder to shop, couldn't they? If you walk through the door, it goes ding, 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 and, and you go, go. And for fat people, the, sh the shopping moves around a bit. <laughs> yeah, you know it's what I mean? Yeah, moving away. It's, yeah, exactly. You're putting it on a string. Yeah. Or something to, you want the pie, and you, you have to at least get up a bit of a sweat. Well, they're on the conveyor pie. belts, like in a sushi restaurant. <laughs> and they just exactly, got to chase yeah. after the <laughs> oven fried chips. Unbelievable. Or so, is there some kind of cattle grid device that only fat? Is there anything that we could put? Oh, you can only get to you this. You can only get to the food. If you if can you... get through this. Right, yeah. That's a good point, yeah. So the really fattening stuff is through a thin door. Or just, yeah, or one of those kind of, um, those sort of, uh, tubes that soldiers you see have to crawl through when they're yeah. doing their training. and that's to, to pies, to right. calorific, <laughs> exactly. to the calorific, the calorific, calorific stuff. section. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the shop is full of salads. Yeah. You can go around, you can even eat as you go around yeah, the salads. Yeah, it's like a you forest of salads. Exactly, yeah. you can graze and you can buy. But if you want to get to the pies and cakes and all that, yeah. you've got to get through a little you've tube. You've got to crawl through a little tube. Yeah, yeah, it would just be forever going, dude, fat bloke stuck in aisle three. But, They'd have to keep yeah. getting them out. Well, I, I was stuck behind one on the tube. It, it got out of the tube, uh, on the escalators. And you know, like on escalators, you're meant to stand to the right so people can get past. Yeah. It was a waste of time him standing on the right. Yeah, yeah. Taking up the full thing. <laughs> uh, he had a tracksuit on, like they always do. You know. Uh -uh. Never seen a track in its life, that, <laughs> no. that tracksuit. And uh, <laughs> so I stayed behind him because he had no option. He saw everyone behind me sort of going, what's the old up here? Like a convoy of people going, what's at the front? What's happening here? What's and it's him sort of blocking it. He gets to the bit, you know, where you have to put your ticket in or your Oyster card and yeah. swipe it. He had to go through the bit for trolleys. Oh, oh, it's it's luggage. Yeah. How embarrassing is Unbelievable. that? Unbelievable. But that's but you when know you know, isn't it? That's when you go, you know what? Exactly. But I don't think there's enough stigma. I think, because, you know, political correctness now and, and you know, and, and the fact that food is so refined, there's no stigma anymore. I laugh about being fat. I should be ashamed. I should walk down the street and go, fatty! That's, that's what I want to get me out of there. I, I, I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror, I go, oh, you fucking fat bastard. Yeah. But no, I think know. I think the same every time I see you. I know, but look how successful I am. But you're right. It's, you know, it's... I should be. You know, people look up to you, Rick. That's the problem. You're a role model. They've got pictures of you on their wall. I often get stuff voted in their face. role model for people want to be. Do they, yeah. Now maybe they don't mean they want to make a successful sitcom and uh, no. be rich and famous. Maybe they mean I want to 
eat as much as I want and no one say anything about the it. The number of times I've seen you on one of those, the ideal dinner guest. I know. You're not the ideal dinner guest. Well, it, it, I'm, Firstly, I'm, there'd be nothing else to go round for that, anyone else. And I'm always early. Right. So by the time anyone, that, that'd be yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. The, the ideal dinner guest, as long as he comes halfway through the meal. Yeah. So and I think they mean, oh, it'd be funny because he'd be very witty and charming. No, he'd just be stuffing his face for two hours. Wouldn't be talking. I wouldn't be talking. <laughs> if there's food there, I, I, I'll just listen. I can mm. listen. I mean, I can't really hear because when I chow down, some of it gets in my ears. Sure, yeah. I will go deep into a pasta. Yeah, the face is in the bowl. I'm I'm actually deaf and blind for four minutes that I'm eating. <laughs> yeah. It's like when a horse bolts. Yeah. They yeah, can't yeah. see or hear anything. Yeah. They just yeah. bolt. Um, but, you know, th I don't know what we could do, really. I mean, I, I... I mean, I think we should be clear here. We're not... Uh, we're not saying, you know, we don't want to encourage We're not people. saying, um, fat people are all right. We're saying they're wrong. Well, yeah, but I, I want to make, oh, no. no, I want to make an important point here. Okay. Rick, which is that we're not talking, well, we're not talking about pigs. how, listen, what? Fat, this is important. This is an important point. Okay. There's a lot of young people, you know, and they, they don't eat and stuff because they want to try and look like Victoria Beck and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about just being, you know, respectable size, no. you know, a little bit curvy or whatever. You don't got to be like a size zero. We're not talking about that debate. Definitely not. We're talking about the crazy obesity that's going on. Five foot two, you're weighing 14 stone. You, Absolutely. That's, it's a time to probably stop going to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Yeah. Which is not a competition, <laughs> incidentally. But, you know... It's because, yeah. like you said, though, you're not allowed to There's call no them fatty anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. When, I, at when I was at school, if there was a fat kid, yeah. He did get, you know, b sort of being picked on and that isn't good. His nickname but the fact was is, Pie or Fatty but, or But he'd, be, or... he'd sort of be chased to be beaten up, so at least he got a run. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, kids aren't allowed to pick on little fat kids. No, I know, I know. So he's not <laughs> running anywhere, and it gets worse. See, that, maybe that's, it's, it's, it, is that, is that a good thing? If you pick on a fat kid and steal his lunch money, is that being, is that cruel to be kind? Mm. Do you know well, what I mean? Survival of the fittest again, isn't it? But I mean, you know, they go, uh, they go, they go, okay, Jobson, you picked on a little fatty again and nicked his lunch money. You go, yeah, I thought he was eating too much and I'm worried about his heart. They go, oh, well done, Jobson. Yeah. Go and pick up some more fat people, nick all their lunch money. I don't know what the rules are. I mean, as I, I don't say, know. it's all gone crazy. I mean, I think I'm allowed to call people fat because I'm a bit fat. You're reclaiming the word. It's like our black people can say the N-word, I can say the F-word, I can say, yeah. I can say fatty, because I am fat, you know. It is remarkable. I mean, you've seen pictures of Ricky Shirley Carl in his youth. I mean, you know, kind of David Bowie-like, uh, face, you know, yeah, very a different person. strong. But anyone who I, who's ever seen that to me has said, I, I don't understand. They're just genuinely baffled. I mean, it is weird. It's really, I don't understand, Rick, how you've gone from that. People should look you up on the web and it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't Jane get annoyed? Doesn't she feel like she's been ripped off? <laughs> no, no, when I was 20. Did you not notice? I was 20, yeah. and then, and I stayed like that till I was about 29. And then, then I thought, oh, well, then I started filling out. Then I was sort of like yeah, becoming a normal I knew you by when you were about 36 and you were- Yeah, oh, I was already there. No, I'd done the eating years then, boy. No, I'd, I, I went from about, I mean, in those pictures, I was probably like eight and a half stone, too thin. Yeah. And then I was like nine. And then 30, 31, went to 10 stone, and then about a stone a year. I think I was my fattest when, uh, just after. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm like 14 stone now. But it's like, it's like, if you look at it on the web or something, compare the two, it's like one of those Weight Watchers before and after, but the wrong way around. <laughs> yeah. It's really strange. <laughs> yeah, so, so I feel that I can have a go at, at fat people. I think I can claim the word I can call fatty. Like, like Steve can have a go at like you can have a go at bald people, Carl. You can go oh, look at that round-headed bald twat. You would never see someone as round-headed and bald as you. But and Steve can go, oh look, Rick, look at that fucking twattish, goggle-eyed freak over there. Yeah, no, 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 no. How often would that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let's slag Ricky off a bit more, can we? And fatos. <laughs> <laughs> also, I've got. A, this is how much I've let myself go, Steve. It's finally happened. I want you to test my trousers. There, feel them. Oh, uh, what is that? That is some pajamas. Kind of... Are you actually wearing pajamas? You... I'm actually wearing. It you happened come out today. Of my house. That's the first time. Now, was it because of speed? You had to get out of the house because you. No, were late? I'll tell you why. Right? Okay, the last couple of years. Um, uh, I mean, for the last, I'd say, ten years, I've been wearing comfortable clothes. I never wear a pair of jeans that are too tight. I don't wear shoes that are It's just comfort for me. Yeah. I mean, you, you see me fidget when I put a suit on for an award ceremony. Yeah. I don't like it, okay? Mm. Um, I never look good in stuff. You see it on the model in the in the shop window. Yeah. Puts it on you. Oh, well, okay. So, 
that's great. They look like David Beckham. I put it on, I look like a wallet or something. Do you know what I mean? Just, <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't look good. Um, I've been wearing, um, as you know, sweatpants, right? Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. a, a drawstring. Yeah. Okay. I got a pair of, um, sweatpants recently that are nearly pyjamas. They're so, that, that, I mean, uh, what is the distinction at this point? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's quite a thin line. The, 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 so, to, uh, they're nearly pyjamas. Today, um, they're in the wash. So I thought, Hold on, though. I might as well just wear my pyjamas. I should point out that it's not a 1950s pair of pyjamas that looks a bit like a suit with a little breast pocket. No. And that it's, you, you wouldn't necessarily notice. No, you wouldn't. Until you touch they're, them, you realise there's a kind of lycra. Yeah, they're very sort of nice and thin. They look like a tracksuit bottom. But, here's the difference. I've even done away with a drawstring. Look, these are just elasticated. elasticated. This is the day I really gave up. I used to worry about what I looked like, obviously, when there was a... Uh... You know, when there was a nice sort of clothes horse to hang nice clothes on, mm. i.e. my body, you know, I I did squeeze into jeans. I did, you know, I wear, um, I was, I was, um, I was fashionable, but, um. Did you, go, I can't imagine you going in shops though and looking through racks of clothes and, did you do all that stuff? Steve, I look good in anything, mate. That's the, that's the difference. Right. Now, doesn't matter. Armani could dress me. Doesn't matter. Yeah. He's not, I mean, not that he'd want to. I, I can't believe I, I keep getting offered from people like him and designers um, to, to call my agent saying, um, does he want us to dress him for the, um, the Emmys? Do they Golden do, do, do pyjamas? Well, exactly. <laughs> One, I think, why do they want to, uh, 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 what, is that going to put sales up? Is someone going to be watching that and go, hey, yeah, that, that bloke looks short and fat and sweaty. Um, get me Armani on the phone. But you know, maybe that's someone from the Emmy committee going, can you phone up Ricky Gervais and just yeah. check that when they say, can we dress him from the Emmys, we mean, can we make sure he's dressed yeah. from the Emmys? Can we tuck him in <laughs> yeah. and leave his slippers at the hotel? <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't do it anyway because I'm mildly embarrassed. I, we went around those sort of luxury lounges where they give you things, they mm. give you these, like, suits, like you know, Armani, Hugo Boss, they're just giving you Hang suits. On, what, what, I wasn't worried about this. Oh, yeah. When's this going on? Yeah, when before, like, the Emmys, every... every what the fuck? I was out there, but <laughs> no one notified me. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get an invite. What do you um, mean I didn't get an invite? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first one I went to, I was mildly embarrassed went around. Then I saw, like, Helen Mirren, The Sopranos. Bloody with... Helen Mirren's going round there and I'm not... Yeah. Yeah. But she has, she has, she's got more money than me. She don't need to go and get free stuff. She's the queen. She's the richest woman in the world. Fucking hell. Yeah, you've been, you've missed out, Steve. And they, they, they measure you and everything. I've, ta I've oh, taken... this off. This I've, is insane. I've taken one suit. I've taken one suit and, um, uh, I think a jacket. But usually what I do is I say oh, I have a pair of sunglasses. I'm like out on John at home. I've got a drawer full of the best sunglasses in the world. One-off editions of these beautiful sunglasses where I'm embarrassed not to take something. They're incredible. They just, they just give you all these things, you know. I it, feel like, um, the kid <laughs> in, uh, the Pied Piper, Remember when the Pied Piper, as revenge, he takes all the kids to a sort of yeah. magical land inside a rock where there's just sweets and fun, but the little lame, little lame kid, boy, he, couldn't, he can't uh, get in there. He's left behind in the rat, formerly rat-infested town. But, but he had the last laugh, didn't he? Because he couldn't go and get locked in the cave. Yeah, but he didn't, they weren't locked, it was a magical land inside the cave, he wanted to be in there. Was it? Yes, or famously. Was it, or was he a paedophile? Yeah, but that's gotta be, uh, it's gotta be better than being stuck in a town with rats <laughs> and old people. <laughs> At least you get sweets. <laughs> and a puppy. I worried then for a minute. I thought, oh, that's libelous. What? The, the, the Pied, uh, Pied Piper, Piper was a paedophile. Like, so, uh, excuse me, it's the Pied Piper here. Um, we are... Yeah. Uh, we represent the Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we represent the Pied Fiddler. The Pied Piper. The, the, <laughs> yeah. the Pied, 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 Pied Piper. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, um, you know, I used to, uh, I used to care about fashion. Mm. Um, but, uh, I also had little mistakes. If you're right. being creative with clothing, you get, not everything's a winner. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't always look good, even even when I thought I looked good in everything. So what was, just quickly, what sort of era are we talking? Well, um, uh, obviously student, that's when I sort of did the... And what was your default look? Um, new romantic. Right. I mean, you know, the first thing I did when I got to college, dyed my hair. Blousy shirts. Uh, blousy shirts, but I dyed it black, sometimes military. The military was very big then, so, right. you know, you'd have dyed black hair and a bit of eyeliner, but you know, maybe look a bit, a bit, um, sort of, um, you know, gorilla. Then, um, um, I got signed, uh, when I was in a, a, a pop band, a failed pop band, very quickly, but you know, I bought designer clothes, but then it all went, okay? So, the poor years, um, from when I was about, 
I don't know, 22 to 29 before I got a job. Four years, starting 22, you had the high life. You yeah. Out by then. Yeah, and uh, so uh, we lived in that awful little place where I, I talk about it live, where, you know, there was no toilet so often I'd I'd wee in the sink. Sure. Um, and so... Great days. Uh, so I thought, well, I didn't have any money at all. And I used to wear a tracksuit all the time then, because I, be, I used to run around London. I was on the doll. Um, we had 16 quid between us a week to spend. Right, so there was a lot of chili con carne being eaten yes. and rice, just filling up on rice and and uh, and I'd run everywhere and I was You'd I, run everywhere. Yeah, I just run. I'd get up and I'd run places. I'd run around the park. I'd run to visit friends who had jobs. I'd run to art galleries and I'd run London. That was that was like my job. But why were you running it? It sounds like it's the life of a smackhead. Why I was were you <laughs> running everywhere. <laughs> I was super fit in my twenties. I'm not only sort of like thin, but fit as well. I'd run at least five to ten miles a day and work out i do i did karate twice a week i'd so i just i mean honestly Every, anything but a job anything but a job yeah because i was trying to be a pop star and right. i told myself no i'm an artist yeah, i can't yeah. get, possibly get a job it's bohemian i just eat rice yeah. well and i was fine it was absolutely fine never but i never thought oh this is really annoying i gotta get a job i thought you know i haven't got a job i'm doing this i'm doing a banner you were and signing it, on were you Getting yeah gold uh, well I, I couldn't i couldn't because um uh, I hadn't had a job before that, so I think we got our rent paid, and then we'd split Jane's money that she earned, we got our rent paid, and you know, we were left with, uh, as I say, I remember it being, it was 16 quid a week, and it was, it was the early 80s, isn't it? mid 80s. So, um, I didn't get new clothes, so I had some, you know, old, old ones, and you know, to go to Jumble Sales, it's fine, yeah. okay. Um, but I remember once, we, uh, we were getting new curtains, and uh, the old ones that were in this flat, were like sort of a chintzy, sort of goldish sort of lie with a thread in them, with sort of leafy pattern, uh, very sort of thick. What kind of late seventies style? Yeah, exactly. And Jane was gonna took the old ones down. I went, don't throw them away. I'll make a suit out of those. <laughs> yeah, of course. So sort of Jane just sort of nodded and went, okay. And she went to work. Okay. So I thought, wow, okay, let's have a go. I'll I've never, show her. I've never made a suit before, <laughs> but how hard can it be? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I used to. You know, that would be my first thought. Um. I used to make everything. I used to make, uh, I remember I uh, <laughs> made shelves once. I found three bits of wood in a skip, okay, and I sort of put two um, vertically and put one across the top, right, so it was like, you know, a goal post, right, I thought a shelf. Right. Um, I put a nail in each side. It sort of wobbled. I put it against the wall and it wouldn't stand up. It sort of like <clears throat> leaned, like I made a parallelogram. So what I did, I put another nail in it and I tried a bit of string to it and pulled the string tight. I pulled it across the room and put another nail in the windowsill. And so now there's this shelf that wants to fall over but can't because it's tied to another wall. Um, so that was... Uh, you, so you spent most of this, the 80s <laughs> running around London <laughs> and collecting debris and making your home out of it. You sound like a womble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't shaped like one until I was 32. And you, and this is kind of, uh, you were making everything except a living. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. right. So, so I thought, right, how do I make a suit? I thought, well, I used to go to the library and learn, I don't know, I, I can make a suit. You know, mm. I, I don't want to do it like other people, I do it differently. Do it so, so my method for making this made to measure suit, um, was I got one of the sets of curtains and laid them on the floor. Right. I laid down on the curtain and drew round my legs. Right. Okay. Hang on. So you were making the trousers first? Yeah. So I thought, hold on, that's just one side of the trouser. So I laid down another curtain and drew round my legs again. And I thought, right, I cut those out. So now I've cut out two leg shaped curtain yeah. pieces, right? I put them together, sewed them up. Of course, it was nowhere big enough. Of course Because not. I'd left no room, right? Yeah. So I tried to squeeze into them. I mean, they look like jodhpurs. They look like tights, yeah. okay? So I thought, oh, this is really hard, right? I pulled them off again, right? I thought, how am I going to make the jacket? I didn't. I just used one of the curtains as a cape. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I mean, I look like a gay Hamlet. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? So what I did was, uh... Did you squeeze into the trousers? You wore the trousers? I, I sort of squeezed them. I couldn't wear them, though. Yeah, I swear. Yeah. So what I did was, um, I rolled it up and shoved it under the chair. You sh what, you rolled up what? Sorry, I... To the suit I made. Jane came in about a few days later, she went, what's that? I said, oh, that's where I had to go at the suit. And she pulled it out and, you know, died laughing. The idea that this, that this, this man 
sat down and drew around his legs but to make like some trousers. But you, well, firstly, why did he not just throw it away? Why did he stash it under the... I don't know, because I thought... And you were watching TV on the sofa and she was a foot higher than you. <laughs> and she thought, what's going on here? And there was a suit stuffed. I mean, why not just throw it away? I don't understand. I don't know. That's what you do, isn't it? You think, oh... Maybe well, what I f again, we were talking before about the fact that you used to be very thin uh, and now you're very fat. Mm. And they seems like two different people. Well, not very I mean, fat. Oh. Well, uh, most people would say you are. Yeah. But, um, but wearing it, black. It seems as though you were also an idiot when you were younger. I mean, like, because you're a smart man now. I don't, well, like, no, I why would it not occur to you that you couldn't make your own suit? Because I've always thought I can do anything. I've always thought, well, I can make a suit. Of course I can make a suit. I'll be brilliant at that. I'll yeah. make a suit. And it, it took me, it took me getting fat to realise the world doesn't lay down to you. Yeah. I, I thought, well, I'll never be fat. I will never be fat. Look yeah. at me. Look at me. <laughs> you know? So I suppose- And even that, as you were getting fatter, that must be the mirror. <laughs> no. Jane, so, problem with the mirror. No, at least I can put eyes on myself as soon as I started getting fat. I started saying I was fat before I was fat. Yeah. Because when you've been really thin, you know, yeah. um, I, I, I mean, I couldn't get anywhere near those curtains now. No, oh, I couldn't. I, they, they wouldn't go past my ankles now. You kept them. <laughs> yeah, they're under the chair. Yeah, yeah. You uh, and you still, of course, uh, if someone comes to the door and you can't be bothered to reach for your pajamas, maybe just wrap the curtain around you. I just pop the curtain around yeah. me. Yeah, I could probably make a pair of pants out of them. I mean, soon I will be in nappies, which will be easy to make. Yeah. So, but when I'm older, and Dan goes, just off to work. Where are those pillowcases? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I need changing. God. Food's too nice, though, isn't it? That's that's where the where the problem is. Well, yeah, some food. Uh, well, no, a lot a lot of food. More food's nice now. I, I find that I eat because I go, that's nice, rather than I'm hungry. Oh that yeah, seems to be the problem. I stopped eating when I was hungry. Um, when I was about twenty nine. Yeah. I used to, uh, oh, I've got to eat now. I've got other stuff to do. We got to eat. Yeah, shove it in, right? And then uh, that I've I've never. I've never only ate because I was hungry for uh, many, many years. But, but it's not just that either, is it? Like we've got mates who've like had a kid now, and that's eating stuff. That seriously, I'm not, I'm not joking. That is having stuff that I've never had, and it hasn't even got teeth yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what sort of things are you talking about? Mango. I only had that. <laughs> I, had, I had mango about a year and a half ago, and it's all right. I mean, it's not one of my favourite. Is it fruit? Yeah. But there's so much other fruit that's that's better. Go on. I think. What's better than the mango? The banana springs to mind, the strawberry. Just, I, I like, I like the ones that you can just go, I'm nipping out, what can I take with me? I'll have an apple. Well, the banana's the best, because it's got its own that's, little carry case. Yeah, yeah that's know. all right, but they're saying that, you see, this is why we've got more fat people. In supermarkets now, you can buy cut-up apple in a bag. Really? That's, that is that's lazy, lazy, isn't it? That, that is, is lazy. lazy. Well, again, I've got to confess that I have my portions of fruit, first thing in the morning, um, liquidised. Yeah. I have a smoothie, I put all the fruit in there, I drink it. I'm not chewing. You want me to eat fruit, I'm not chewing it. At Steve, the end of the day, food's nice. Yeah. There's loads of it. Mm. Well. No, there is. In the Western world there is, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. But in the Western there's world, not. Yeah, okay. but this is the whole point, isn't it, about the, the gluttonous West, is that we are indulging ourselves. Yeah. If we yeah. were scrabbling around starving, like a third world country, we wouldn't be in that situation. Well, there's but all we're the- drinking the fizzy lemonades exactly, and the Exactly, there's loads of it. it. And now, every time I buy something, it's a two for one. So you end up buying more than you need, and then Suzanne's always saying, eat this ham, will you? It's going off. <laughs> I don't even want it. <laughs> Why is she buying so much ham? Because it's two for one offer. We don't need two lots, but the person at the till goes, you know, this is two for one, you go on, nip back and get one. And I know you what get you mean, it, though. I mean, it, 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 yeah, they never do half price, they do two, two for, for one. one. Exactly. They did that with a meal once. We were in LA, and we had a meal, and they said, uh, you know, it's happy hour, it's two for one. So I went, well, can we just have one each, and I went, we've got to give it to you. And they brought two meals for everyone. Yeah. It was ridiculous. That's mad. Yeah. I am. Of course but, you. I'll tell you another problem that I've worked out. Here it might, might make a slight difference on fat people. Don't put a light in a fridge, because that's just that's just that night when they get peckish, they can see everything that's in there. Don't put the light there. You don't need a light in a fridge. There's no lights in other cupboards. Yet where there's food, it's like fat is getting up at four in the morning. What can it have? What's that at the back? Get rid of the light. They'd eat less. That might there might be some logic in that. That's interesting. Well, what's it there for? Tell me what that light is there for. They say turn off your standby light. Yet you've got a light in your fridge. Well, no, it's showing you where tomatoes is. You know, or but it's chocolate. turned off when you shut. The, you don't, the light's not on when the door's not open. Yes, but a fat person who's always got the fridge door open. <laughs> <laughs>